how the board of the contact for DOE, also contact for schools, and this individual will drive uh, the majority of the work for cleanup through FTE as we reconsolidate uh, some of the current additions that were uh, currently in this infrastructure. Um, That's a current job right now, correct? Um, there is a, no, yeah, this will be a, a new one. We have a supervisor that's kind of uh, taking on some of this role. But with uh, a departure of one of right. our other individuals, Thank we you. want that's to add some more responsibilities and lead some of that work, and that would help us in that. So it's a, um, it's a, you're using an allocation you already have. I don't have this allocation. Okay. We have a supervisor position. By creating this position, it will allow, let me ask this question for direct, uh, direct points. But this position will allow us to add some additional positions that I have with Dwayne Weeks. Dwayne Weeks is no longer with right, us. Right. So this position, that position will be, um, the roles and responsibilities will be divvied up. And uh, one of this will take on, this individual is a supervisor, and potentially take on a director position and take on more responsibilities to lead the work. So to answer her question, there is sort of a position there. And this kind is of. We're just, tweaking it. We're just up. Are we adding? Or upgrading. Or up, upgrading. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mohan. Um, with with um, Mr. Hendricks' departure and the superintendent's reorganization, and then with Mr. Weeks' departure, gave us an opportunity to really look at all of the different functions of that larger group, um, allowing us to kind of divvy up the work, as Mr. Davis said, um, creating a position of director for both of those, these two kind of new larger functions. 
functions um, to oversee the work of, uh, of course, FTE, because FTE drives all of our funding. We want to make sure that's correct. But all the state reporting, all of the state assessments, all of the accountability elements, um, our analytics, our visual analytics, our data analytics that we want to start building now for um, use at the school level. Um, all of those different functions, we just felt like the director position kind of spoke to the, the importance of the work and the, the volume of the work that, that currently the supervisors themselves are kind of having to take on given Mr. Weeks's departure. Okay. So the, the positions are new, Ms. Condon. Um, they do not currently exist. And, and Mr. McCaw, we, we talked about this in our presentation to the board and during your presentation to the board. There was the, uh, the Director of Assessment Accountability, the Director of Informational Services, along with three additional support personnel embedded within that the entire IT process to, to help with data management, with implementation of, of digital learning, become digital natives. And after all of that, we package, we would save $12,000 by December with adding the positions to do So, sorry. Go ahead. So is there going to, are there going to be two director positions then under yeah. that area? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Because I area. see that there's one vacant right now. Yes, ma'am. Well, according to this. Those are, yeah. I know. Sure. This, but this was the newest thing we had. <laughs> and that's why I was asking for the, yeah. so in essence, two directors. Okay. Yes, ma'am. The only other comment I had on this job description is number five. Um, I, I, I don't understand that one. I, I didn't, I haven't ever seen that statement in under required qualifications. Of knowledge of and experience in the education industry. I haven't seen that in any of our other job descriptions, and it almost seems like something's missing. Right. Under required qualifications. One of the things that we see often, and um, why why it was sort of offered in that language, and we can certainly tweak it if if we need to, is making sure that we get these highly technically trained individuals who have experience inside the educational realm uh, okay. because we compete with um, business and industry uh, and, and while those skill sets I'm, I'm sure are phenomenal coming into our environment, um, my biggest concern was making sure that we had individuals who understood kind of how the FTE process works, understands how the survey reporting works to DOE. So not necessarily someone internally or not necessarily Oh, yes, no, exactly. Yes, ma'am. But, but someone who, like we feel like if you could go pluck someone out of one of these software companies yeah. or something like that. Um, right. Okay. Yeah, and to be honest, this is, this is a position we need to be highly, highly skilled in it to sort of come into work. Maybe it's just that comma is misplaced. Place. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> we can look at uh, it, additionally, uh, the Director of Informational Services, this is uh, continue to, the continual body of work with, with IT, with all the initiatives, especially with the um, a proposal coming soon about how we continue to support schools through infrastructure. As you know, infrastructure is a, um, a we're lacking in the school district. But then again, to, give, to continue to have vision for moving to the one-to-one -one as much as we can and support all the digital initiatives that we are bringing forward in relation to the curriculum side. So on this job description, um, it says in the, under job description, it says the Director of Information Services is responsible to an assistant superintendent as determined by the superintendent and serves in a staff relationship with other directors and executive leadership. Then down in the responsibilities and duties, it talks specifically about the climate and culture division. Right. So mm -hmm. it didn't make sense to me that it wouldn't say because if if you I, I totally get that you might decide to put this position in a different department I, I, I understand that and I know that that's been a debate in the past yeah. and so I'm fine with that but then that person this would stuff. not maintain relationships in the that's climate right. and culture that's just, that's appropriately yeah. I, I would recommend that we change that Mr. Superintendent sure. to read and superintendent rather assistant superintendent rather than yeah. That's 
see, and that position is, uh, you'll see is ESE SEDNET supervisor? Hang on, that's all right. I'm under, um, I wasn't sure about, so on number two, desire qualifications, knowledge of state statutes and state board of education rules, you mean specifically DOE, right? Like, like you want somebody who knows what DOE is expecting also from a, from a technology standpoint. Yes, and even outside of DOE, because there's often statutes and legislation that kind of dictate the digital footprint okay. yeah. that different state agencies, aka education agencies, must also abide by. Okay, I just wasn't sure on that one. Thank yeah, you. And, and, I'm sorry. and also understand the funding sources they give us for the digital classrooms as well. All right, the next one is uh, the one I want to bring your attention is the ESC SEDNET supervisor. This is a position that um, is, uh, is state funding. This is a position we want the, the, uh, the come on and drive the work for grant funding, personnel, and budget internally um, for, for our school district. This position is currently a supervisor. She's currently a specialist. That's um, Kathy Lawrence. You've all met. Um, she is a current specialist and therefore does not have the, the rights to engage in you know, personnel matters, budget matters, et cetera. Being that it is a state discretionary project, um, I won't want to, don't want to say how many there are around the state, but there are multiple set nets around the state and each with their own particular structure. They are generally affiliated with school districts, so we, in essence, act as a pass-through for their funding. Um, this would allow Ms. Lawrence to um, more efficiently manage the work that is done through that program and the support for not only Clay, but I think you guys are aware of Nassau and Duval as well. Mm -hmm. so th this provides our opportunity to hire, engage in, with personnel, drive the budget, seek grants, identify, identify funding, yes. she's, she's highly effective. So we're just changing it. And, and that funding would be completely supported by the grant. Yeah, this, is, this is where I get into confusion with young resources. I'm going back to my state days here, sorry. When we create a position, this is creating a position, correct? Correct. correct. So do we have to, help me with this, Mr. Brodsky, do we have to post this position and take applications for the position? Because, I mean, we're talking about a person that we want for this position, and we know that this person is sort of already working with said that, right? Yeah. And so what we're doing is we're trying, yes, and we know that, and I agree with that. But I'm just saying, if we create a new position, then do we have to open it up for um, people to apply for the interview process? Yeah, I believe the superintendent can place yeah. the individual into that position. Say that again? The superintendent can place the individual into that position. Awesome, okay. I just wanted clarification, because I'm like, when we do the new positions, I'm like, and we're talking about someone already going into it. Right. It's yeah. that's when my this is, this is the only one. Go, Wait a minute. The yeah. This okay. is this is one of the only ones that we believe should be a, almost a direct report. A report awesome. point because she's already she's, a, she's already experienced everything else. Will, will, it's will, like will nobody else will really have that. Okay. Correct. Okay. We'll go to the interview process and find the best candidate. Cool beans. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I was, I was um, interested in the number three required qualification, three years experience in administration at the school level. That, um, that design, is that done? Design? It's under required. Under required. But, so, so here's what I was intrigued by under this job description, that we said currently possess or eligibility to receive a Florida educator certificate and or licensure in a child-related field, counseling, okay. social work, psychology, master's degree, three years administration at the school level, and skills in human relations. I get all that. Desired qualifications would be actually a master's degree in special ed guidance, counseling, social work, psychology, experience in grant writing, automated management of data, ability to supervise and direct. I'm fine with all of that. It just seemed to me odd that we would rather have administration at the school level than to actually have them have the license in psychology, social work, or that kind of thing, given what this person does. But but I, yeah. I'm i not the expert to question. It just seemed odd to me. Good, fair question. Mm -hmm. um, when we wrote this, we wanted to try to be as 
general but specific as possible. A political answer, I apologize. Um, because the idea behind the person who oversees a lot of the said network um, is involved with um, many community partners, and many of those community partners want to engage uh, and give money. Um, so there's sort of a need for someone who also has might have that experience in terms of just helping to fund the work and ultimately expand what is an option. Um, so in, in my attempt to try to capture all of that, I'm I clearly confused. That. No, 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 it's fine. It just I, it just, I wasn't sure what we were really That's a good question. Okay, next one uh, that will bring to your attention is coordinator of secondary programs. As you know, I think two board meetings ago, uh, when we were doing allocations, it was fair. One of the positions we cut was the the supervisor of, of secondary programs. Um, and we have a chief of secondary education um, in, within our schools, and this is um, the allocate that funding is still there for that position, which was uh, Francis Sellis's position. Um, but we, we cut that was that allocation, but now we're bringing them back as downgraded as a coordinator. This is an individual who will assist the chief, track college readiness, continue to be a contact for DOE, coordinate uh, college ready, ensure that the pupil progression plan is followed with master schedule guidelines, um, continue to coordinate the work with um, secondary um, curriculum coaches in order to support support the work within our schools to identify who may need additional job, um, additional professional development through job embedded professional development or at scale. Uh, we believe that this individual will, will help in so many um, uh, ways uh, with the, the chief of secondary education. Next one is a coordinator of school choice and charter schools. As you know, that um, uh, school choice is, is 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 growing extremely, and we think we we need someone on site to, to help really look at what we offer within our school district. Um, we will be eliminating a position in professional development uh, to create this position an opportunity. In the position in professional development is a vacant position. So um, it, it will be a small, small upgrade to the coordinator. Um, but this position here, we have to create choice within our elementary and junior high schools. Right now we do a fabulous job within our high schools, with our academies and our pathways. Um, but we have got to create excitement um, for a launch in initiatives, themes, and programs, which we will do, start the, the planning process now, and then hopefully by um, November, December, we'll have a plan for a launch of 1819s so we can start competing. This individual, will, it just made sense for this individual also to take on charter schools as well, because there's a lot of uh, contractual language, monthly information that we have to, to take in to better to actually have a um, better support factor for them as well. So this is a position that will coordinate all of school choice. And it really could just say coordinator school choice because everything's choice versus charter schools as well. What is the position that's being eliminated to? It's a curriculum specialist position. I believe it's a 12-month position that will be eliminated. So part of this job be what Francis Sellers used to do? Um, it would take on some work of charter schools. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. And, and let me, you know, it would take on all of the governing body to help and assist, but then we'll take on driving the work for choice within our school district as well. So you said you're deleting a curriculum Freedom specialist. specialist. Ma'am? No, ma'am. It's a vacant. It's a vacant position. So on number 14, um, it says prepares recommendations to the superintendent and school board for charter school non-renewal or termination, including all documentation. Right. Um, what about renewal? Because it sounds very negative, and sure. you know all charter schools aren't bad. Sure. Um, so we could just add renewal, or I, and I and maybe the, maybe it's redundant for non-renewal and termination. I don't know, but I know we actually have two votes on that. Obviously. So in 14, add renewal. Yep. I would prefer that, but mm -hmm. I believe it's just old language from, yeah. from the past position. So we can add. All right, the other one I would want to bring your attention to is supervisor. I'm going to pass this out so everyone can see this. So looking at, we, I talked about a couple weeks ago about. Um, well, level, leveling the position you have one as well. Leveling the positions in our CTE programs. 
Um, I will tell you after work that, that uh, in the last six months identified the work that each of our individuals take on and they do. Um, this is a part where we have a director currently, we have a, sup um, a supervisor too, and then we have a curriculum specialist that all work in CTE programs. Uh, from CTE side, um, surrounding counties usually have one, one person that drives to work. Um, that person is either identified in isolation as a director, um, some places it could be considered as a lead, some places it could be considered as an as executive director, just to be honest with you. Um, we are fortunate to have three individuals in this program, and after me and my staff and working with the current staff, who I believe every one of them are awesome and have different skill sets, this is part of the process that we will begin leveling within the school district to level positions that we currently have to make certain that um, we acknowledge individual skill set and what they bring to the table. Um, this is not in any way uh, to minimize or the, the work that uh, our current director does, because she is fabulous in the community. She is really great, has an awesome skill set, very polished. Um, so that position, uh, bless you, is to take the director position and make it a supervisor one. Is the end. The supervisor one position will be CTE business and community partners within our school district. This individual currently takes on, if you see this chart, currently takes on all the roles and responsibilities as creating advisory boards, engaging the community, attending uh, chamber meetings, creating internships, externships, does great work with, um, with shadowing opportunities and drives um, the college career coaches as well. Um, that's one of the positions that we're looking for the director. We're also taking the director too, who has a different skill set, who really is the meat and potatoes of what we do in our district as it relates to CTE, without a doubt. I mean, we talk about the end of the day, this individual identifies our curriculum, uh, identifies our equipment, does everything for industry certification, does our allocations, our budget, what programs we will offer, um, looks at grants, leads to professional development, deploys the, the, um, the curriculum specialist to, to see overseas child care, overseas BPK, um, is really uh, a grinder. So these two individuals have very specific skill sets that are in, they're very good at that, at what they do. Um, I wish we had the crossover, but we don't, and that, so I don't want to lose either one of these individuals. We want to maximize what they do and what they bring to the table. So it's just leveling out the positions that we currently have to make two supervisor ones. One is the CTE business partner communities, and the other one is supervisor of program implementation. And then we have the CTE specialist as well. They will ultimately all, the reason we don't need a director because we have a chief of secondary education who would drive the work and has driven the work and understands the work, and then can maximize the skill set of all these individuals um, on this document. Can I ask a question? Sure. Have you spoken with these individuals about yeah. this? Mm -hmm. And they agree with that? And um, yeah, well, it, is, this, it, is this a demotion or a promotion? So at the end of the day, it, it, <laughs> yeah, you, like it's, it, um, yeah, it, oh, really, okay. it, it may be a both, but it's more of leveling. Um, uh, and I've had a conversation with, with these individuals multiple mm -hmm. times. Okay. Um, multiple times about what they do, when they do, when, where, they, where they go, how they do it. They're both very, very good employees. Yes, they are. Um, they're very solid. We appreciate. I mean, they just have two different skill sets. Mm -hmm. So um, where no one wants to take a you know demotion in reference to a title, but the body of work remains the same. Wait, um, if I have. You're going to pay this person less and change their title, but expect the same work. Uh, they will not supervise the, the they will not supervise um, all of the individuals that they used to supervise so no they won't take on they would they will no longer so supervise the yeah the supervisor too and they no longer supervise the specialist so they won't take on additional roles and responsibilities um, we well, talked just what you just said was that their body of work oh when I say that so pretty much this individual body of work is community outreach mm -hmm. that's what it is but oh, you have somebody that does that job that's mm -hmm. on your staff, right? I agree, but it's not related to CTE. I mean, it, we, we, it, this is all CTE driven. This is all, I mean, internships, externships, all, all you know, when working with workforce, continue to work with uh, advisory boards and putting advisory boards together. The individual on my staff is strategic planning with, is currently working on so many different other initiatives within the organization, so. Seems a little redundant. So um, my so my position on this 
hasn't changed since we spoke sure, when I want about it. Um, here's my issue. Um, I pulled up the old job descriptions. And while if you look at the community and business partnerships supervisor, you did take out a couple of things. Um, when you pull up the other one, um, program implementation, nothing was added, nothing. The, the, the job descriptions are the same. And my issue is from a, a process standpoint, from a legal standpoint, from a human resources standpoint, that we can just take a job, when we had a job and human resources priced it, and I'm pointing in Mr. Brodsky's direction, that doesn't sure. mean that I'm singling out you because it was probably priced prior to you being in that department, but a job is priced. And we say... What do you mean when you say priced? That, that's how it works in human resources. You take a job description, you look at the duties of it, and you say, this is the level that it, this level is the salary that this job sure. would command. Sure. And then out of the blue, with nothing added to it, we're going to take one of our... 5,000 employees and say, we didn't add anything to your job, but we're going to give you a promotion. And I think that sets us up as an organization for the potential for a whole lot of other people to say, wait a minute, you need to go look at my job, and we can't afford to do that. Obviously, there's a difference in, in promotions and raises. But it's the same job, and so we're gonna. It's not. I mean, it's a promotion from supervisor two to supervisor one, but it truly is a raise. And we have said all of the other of our administrative positions at the district level and at the school level have not had raises, sure. and so we haven't given those. So I have real concerns sure. about that. My other real concern is, and I said this to you privately sure. on the phone. A demotion is very public. Sure. And it's out there now, so you, you've, you've cast the line and you caught the fish. But the, my concern is the image that we are sending to the community about how we value our CTE programs and the fact that half of our graduates do not go to college. So these programs are essential to half of our kids. And I'm all about student achievement and setting them up for success. And we've just said to the business community, it's not that important for us to give it the director level position that we value. Five Star has given us millions of dollars in our schools. Um, Orange Park Medical has given us hundreds of thousands, if not millions. So I'm concerned about what the business partners see in how we value this position. And then my other concern, frankly, is what we sent, the message we sent to the kids. Sure. That we're, that we're saying to them, if you choose a CTE program, you don't garner an assistant superintendent, you don't garner a director, you garner a, super, a, a couple supervisors. And I just think it's not going to get the attention at the table that it rightfully should deserve. And that's my opinion. But again, we aren't voting today, and I haven't sure. made up my final line, but I am. I so, am opposed to this. So I will. I, I appreciate your feedback. I will tell you a title doesn't um, determine whether or not the program is significant or we lose, um, you know, attraction to it. Um, this is uh, to, to, to directly answer your report. The supervisor too is under was underpaid. That position. I mean, I, I agree. I don't own that. I, I, my job is to own to acknowledge but, the work. But my point on that is, yeah. we cannot afford to go back and have every single one of our other positions who are probably underpaid go back and reevaluate those and give them those. Sure. So why would this job, and I'm only talking about jobs, we don't deal with individuals, you make recommendations right. to individuals. Sure. I'm talking about the jobs. We cannot afford to go back and look at all of our jobs and right. regrade them. Right. So at the end of the day, this is why I'm, I'm a level one. This will be a part of the process that we continue to look at every division and level. And um, that I will continue to level over the next probably year certain divisions and um, I, I believe the supervisor two position was given a lot of responsibilities that's a lot in that box it's not just not a lot in the in the other box but it's very heavy very heavy so I would say please uh, better understand what these individuals bring to the table um, uh, they they have very unique skill sets 
we talk about no one will suffer, programs won't suffer, kids won't suffer, our work continues. It's still excitement, that's why you have a chief of secondary education. They're right, they don't get a director, they get a chief of secondary education to drive the work, who knows the work, who's been around the work. So um, I appreciate the feedback. Uh, the community will, I mean, our business partners, um, you know, I will meet with as many as I can. They will continue to support us, they will continue to work with us, because they want to work with kids. And, um, you know, if, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say that, they're, they're about kids. And um, I, I, I don't see this being an issue um, with us moving forward about the programs we offer, how we offer them, how we connect, and how we move forward. I've had a conversation with many people in the community and about what my direction is for this, and, and they understand it, right? and they just want to work with kids and provide, they, they, they want to work with the school system, provide, continue to provide opportunities for that, and Terry Connor is ready to meet it. Same thing with C6 with iReady. And uh, we and I say this we're working with Mr. Daggett uh, to make sure that um, everything is properly followed. So we would know that you would never see a uh, I'm telling you before, you would never see an award agenda item with a contract that is not attached. And, um, and these two were just picking up some of the language with Mr. Daggett and doing the baggage. So. We want him to look at every contract. He's He's everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sleepless nights here. But I'm here, ladies here. Um, C7 is advertisement for modifications to the student progression plan. Um, this advertisement, the uh, changes will add uh, the third grade exemption for students being retained will be uh, the for good cause exemption at an I ready start. That's something that the um, the, the DOE allowed us to use for good college exemption for students to be uh, um, promoted. We also removed language for special diploma. There's no longer an opportunity for special diploma. It's either a uh, certificate of completion or your, you earn your degree. So those are the two areas. So, how do we need a special diploma? That's what my question Yeah, is. I mean, they, they gave special diplomas to, to students who qualify through disabilities. And um, so they're no longer providing that, and they're just giving them a, a certificate of completion. It's gone. So we can't have special diplomas. 
That's a state law. Uh, that's not our choice. Oh, it's a state Yeah, I would have that. I would have thought that. I mean, and I can give you some more research on that. Something else I should have Mr. Cummings on. Uh, we can call Mr. Cummings and ask him for rationalization. Yeah, I, can, I will send you the updates to that, too, <laughs> explanation why. And I'll follow up so you'll have it. We were about 10 minutes shy of being able to have a regular day and that didn't include the bathroom yeah. breaks that need to take with 25 children. And you already have 150 minutes being added that already for this now to 120 plus. It's going to be hard. Yeah. And that's, I'm going to add that one which is very interesting. Thank you. The other thing is we put in here is uh, CPR uh, for in all of our physical fitness classes, taking a 30 to 40 uh, minute class or lesson on hands-on CPR only so they can um, be prepared uh, and be exposed to that type of uh, 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 skills in order to help with the community. And does that, I, I don't really understand, I haven't gotten into the meat of that statute yet, um, but does that really but the exemption from it, because they use different wording, so they use the wording of the statute of physical fitness Instead of personal fitness, yeah. but it looks like it exempts the requirement of personal fitness if you're a support two years of support. Yeah. And so, um, if that's if that's the case, I wasn't real clear on it. But if that's the case, I guess it would need to be in our progression plan and <coughs> kids. Because the re here's the reason that I'm bringing it up: as as our high schools are doing scheduling for next year, right. it's very it's extremely common that all ninth graders are placed in personal fitness. Yes. And if you have kids that it takes away an elective period or they can take something else if they are going to be exempt from that requirement. Right, they will be. So I mean we can add exemption to it if they're not taking that class. I wonder how students are going to take the C requirement if they take PE online. My son took PE online. So this is online. Yeah. Online. It is awesome. awesome. It is offered. It's offered online. CPR. The CPR is offered online. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, as the mother of a child who took PE online, he would use me as the proverbial dummy to be trying to hands on. CPR. Proverbial. Proverbial. C8 is a request for contract services with Melissa Walker. This is where this is uh, Project Reach, which is whatever. Sorry, uh, this is where we uh, Taiwan requires you to have individuals to continue to have outreach and resources with social workers. So this individual will continue to work with light shops with social workers, continue to help families. There's 928 homeless students they'll work through, and they'll provide tutoring and supplies to families uh, in terms of our kids. I was a Project Reach tutor. And it was very important. C9 is our agreement with uh, the Agency of Healthcare Administration. This is where we have an agreement uh, for them to help with uh, all of our Medicaid billing in reference to receiving our funding. C10 is the Medicaid Administrative uh, Claiming Agreement that we have with the Simple County. They have access to uh, a better data management system that collects all of our information and helps us uh, with all of our, our, our data withdrawals and helps us with our draw funding down to $2 million. 
So um, we just don't have the system to, to access this information. So if this is our group of Simple County to help us with that process. I am not certain if our new system will be able to help, but if it does, C11 is advertisement for uh, 1617 through 1819 special policies and procedural manual. This is a manual for governing all students with special needs policy. No major changes in this policy, but uh, I didn't, it should be attached to 150 pages, so I didn't buy the hard you know, copy of the mail that we sent to you. There you go. But nothing major from the chain. C12 is Keystone Behavior Pediatrics Amendment. We have two students that are attending Keystone Behavior, and this is just extending the school year for them. Uh, these are students who are already attending their school years, and we're just making sure they have uh, continued services throughout the summer. Um, C13 is travel for student travel. We only have one. With uh, Orange Park Junior High School going to Washington, D.C. in February. C14 is uh, Foundations of Professional Development. This is through our DODEA grant. Um, this is where we will bring uh, a consultant in who's been here for a number of years, uh, or has been in the county and provide assistance. This is Ms. Susan Isaacs. She comes for three days to provide um, the training to all school leadership teams to really focus on positive behavior intervention and supports and trying to change the mindset of uh, not focusing on um, negative behaviors and desired behaviors to focus on uh, positive behaviors and, and not only working in common areas but also transition that to our questions. C15 is uh, for striking this. We are um, basically we, we, we thought the contract was ready today and it's not so we will take that for next month. We want to make sure that we are prepared. But we bring this it's all about our nighttime substance for our students and our families. Partnerships. That's C16 is uh, revisions of code of student conduct. Um, we thought about pushing the system to think differently about our code. Um, with all of the changes that we're doing with curriculum, you know, another change that you have to implement <coughs> and understand. We just didn't want to flip the code uh, to make significant changes, so we did not. Uh, we met with committees of, uh, of, of business partners, of, of educators, and leaders to look at the code. We do have some uh, some minor adjustments. Uh, we adjusted. I uh, know that uh, we adjusted to make sure that we say that we addressed the NITS. They said that uh, if the recommendation was individuals to have NITS stay in school. We are making it clear that we are not. That they would not remain in school until treated. Um, we have student recommended. Uh, recommend recommended for expulsion. Any student that um, is suspended recommended expulsion, they can't just sit out and spend for 10 days, sit out for those 10 days and then try to come back to school. But they have to be open and they have to be placed at banner until they go to the hearing officer and the hearing officer reviews their or the committee, they review their case. And then that will determine whether or not they continue their body work and approved or they're going um, to return back to their school. So the language in there to strengthen that. We also added uh, some language about elect electronic um, communication with harassment and bullying. We know that's a major issue with our, with our, uh, our adolescents. So we put that in to strengthen that work. We also put a level three incident where we identified um, inappropriate use of uh, distributing images of kids. Um, we know we lived something last year, so we know that if you, level two is if you take, take the image, and level three will be the one, the next step for if you distribute that image in a um, undesired manner, address that. And then technology agreements for kids, understanding that we use technology in the classroom only when it's led by teachers. So we're not having cell phones out all the time, um, you know, uh, maybe potentially disrupting the class. If a teacher agrees that they want to use that to increase their work or to have uh, immediate interaction if they don't have Chromebooks, then and then use it for instructional purpose, then, then we will support that teacher and their decisions. But that teacher will have to make that decision and we put it over that person does. Can we advertise a, um, I think there are, I know you said you don't feel like there's significant changes, but I think there are significant changes in here. I think they do need to be highlighted to the public. And so, um, 
I really think this should be on the discussion agenda. Okay. Um, we had an issue a few years ago where the dress something was changed in the dress code, and okay. all of us heard about it. Okay. And it was something about short slings, and parents didn't find out till after school started. Yeah. And well, they had bought the clothes, and, and um, so I think it's worthwhile to have the conversation. But the other request that I have is, could we? I don't know if it's red or blue or whatever, but the things that have been at because I Should read and there's a good bit of meat that's in there that's new that's that's black. It, it, you can't tell the difference. And I would like to see either in uh, Yeah, so I don't want to say I'm not sure yeah. what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Everything we did we identified it in red, any changes probably anything that you believe we, we use the standard strikeout and underline yeah. for admitting and adding. It, it seemed like there was language added, so for instance the metal detector policy is put in we didn't do any of that. Yeah, we didn't. It was all the same. It was it was very uh, no, pretty limited in the, the recommendations that the committee had. If there's other things in it that we need to address, we certainly can. Look, they just looked really different than what we've had, and so I'll, I'll I guess I could go through it, but but we didn't. So we didn't add any big chunks no, of language. No, we didn't add anything. Okay. It was all major. Because like in the metal detector policy. I was policy, pushing them to change and, and, uh, The metal detector policy says something obscure about if, if somebody has a, an unapproved metal object. That's kind of yeah. <laughs> fake. That was uh, I, I mean, I'm not specifically saying that that word needs to come out. It just, I was looking for what did we add, what did we change, because I get a lot of calls on the code of conduct. Yes, ma'am. And the other thing that I would just recommend is that we, I think that the student code of conduct, and I've said this for a few years, the student code of conduct is something that on the first day of school, the first few days of school, the teachers go through and it's kind of like, you guys have seen this all before, da 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 If we could highlight the things like electronic communication and give them examples of, and even if we could, I know we don't have a big staff anymore, but if we could make a video or something, you know, have our digital design departments at the high schools make something funny or engaging. Oh. It's, like, it's like the Delta safety videos that are funny yeah. now, and so you kind of pay attention, but you're also getting reiteration, because I think a lot of our young people don't understand that if they airdrop this photo of a person's private parts, which happened at one of our schools this year, kid airdrops to this kid that they've transmitted, they've committed now a level three right. offense. They don't get that. They don't see, they just think they're being funny and it's a kid's thing. And, and I guess what I don't want is for us to have parents be able to come back and say, you never told my child. Sure. And we're saying, yeah, you did, you signed off on this. Right. And I know we can't cover everything, but we gloss over an awful lot and then we want to punish the sure. child when they do that. Yeah, I like your idea that we can definitely prepare yeah, that so. and offer to This came up at the Google uh, Conference of Tampa uh, last week, and I, and I just want to ask you what do we do? Um, something, one of the sessions that I was in, they were talking about, uh, you know, and promoting the this week and so forth, pictures of kids mm -hmm. on this, that, and the other. And I, and I asked the question, I said, do you? have permission to put the kids' pictures out there and because uh, I didn't know, I know we've always been very careful in the past putting kids' pictures on Facebook and, and the social media uh, for fear that we wouldn't have permission. And one of the uh, school members I thought had a great idea, and I don't know if we do this or not, <clears throat> but she said that in the uh, Code of Student Conduct that they did each year, they have a, a tear out, a tear off sheet where they can opt out. Mm -hmm. and, and do we do that? Mm -hmm. I think we well, I think we, we, we have to opt out. I wanted to make sure that we did that because I thought, you know, I didn't, you know, I don't have a child in school, so I didn't know. But I didn't One of the frustrations that. with that is that the first day or two of school, teachers do go over the student, student code of student contact. We do go through that sort of information in a manila packet right. that is sent home to the parents. And if you've got two or three children in school, you get two or three manila packets. And every one of those pieces of paper needs to be either initialed or signed, which refers to the headlights policy, which refers to this code of student conduct, 
which refers to, yes, my child okay. had okay. got an agenda or a, a plan or whatever you'd like to call it. And yes, my child can be, you know, I don't care if my child is, is photographed or not. And so so many of what happens? We get that. We get me. I used to get 24 from back by 24. I mean, you, you, that's one of those things where you just keep plugging yeah. away. Now, the, the kids that opt out, very few, one or two, me. Well, that's now, but, but follow, follow up to that. You know, follow up to that. If there is a special thing, for instance, we got copies of the calendar, right. um, okay? Right. And if that child's artwork is going to be presented, or when um, the Humane Society comes through and gets artwork for their billboards or anything that's special of that nature, we generally send, over, send home an additional request for that signature. I'm just saying that sometimes when we go to the schools, like when we had Central Appreciation Day, you know, we were all taking pictures of us and the kids and so forth, and thank goodness I met these parent was there. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, can I put it on Facebook? She said, sure, but but I wanted to and just social events where we're seeing kids at the field days or whatever, we're just taking shots of pictures, do we have permission? You know, the only thing that's one thing right. to get upset. Well, we had an discipline could attach along the way so that everyone can be consistent versus being subjective in the, set of the discipline that they attach. Um, but we want to interact with this document for an entire calendar year and have information and data analytics in order to make informed decisions of what's our, our <coughs> highest offenses, what, you know, what, what, is our, what are we doing from a progressive uh, discipline standpoint. But we will introduce restorative practice this year. Um, it, uh, through uh, most of our schools. It won't be embedded but in the code as a mandate, but it will be a, a part of practice that they can drive and use as a resource to, um, to assist kids. I frequently get comments from parents about, uh, I know cheer shorts are specifically delineated in there, but what is not delineated are those little volleyball shorts that look like a bathing suit bottom. And I frequently get parents of boys that say to me, why do you guys allow the volleyball players to run around in their whatever the yeah. their shorts? Yeah. And, yeah, and then, and that's a sanctioned school activity. Sure. But then you specifically say you can't wear, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. And, and I know that it's difficult. I know that you know it's it's intriguing to me. I don't pay a lot of attention on the mom of boys, 
but it's been intriguing to me the number of phone calls that I've gotten reminders of parents please remember yoga pants are not appropriate school attire but the cheerleaders can wear their skirts the you know the, the volleyball players can wear their shorts and, and I'm not suggesting one way or the other I'm just telling you I get a whole lot of yeah. comments from parents and then they'll say the other comment from parents and boys is they'll put duct tape on my son's hole in his jeans but the girls can run around in those shorts and so you know it's just a, sometimes and I just kind of show my shoulders because I don't have the no, it is it's not not <laughs> well I, I, I think you're accurate in the sense that we have to have consistent measures but I think it has to be better defined um, I'll give you an example I don't know if you know the women's Nike running shorts you know, I know this with my daughter, they, they're not allowed to wear those at you know, in high school. And but you know, wear them everywhere and they're not bad shorts, but at the end of the day, that's a policy that they implement, but we gotta be consistent because I don't know who else doesn't allow or doesn't allow. So we can work to do better define it and make any amendments uh, you know, once we advertise the yes. And to expand on um, the superintendent's message to have. I think one of the I just wanted to let the board know that the plan was to not overwhelm the system by offering these dramatic changes mm -hmm. uh, and so, so quickly. I would rather engage all of our community partners, students, teachers, um, business partners, uh, parents, etc over the course of the 17-18 school year, or at least leading up to where we get to this place next year, so that we have a document um, that everyone participated in creating, and we don't necessarily have the big question marks and push. And getting students involved, I think, would be very appropriate. Is this right. something that the district advisory committee might get involved in? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Traditionally, the, this revision um, has been fairly restricted in who sits on the committees, and not for any reason I think other than just who might have been available. Uh, I would like to expand it out so, as Mr. Davis said, it includes local law enforcement partnerships and district advisory committees, um, PTAs, people that don't normally get to sit on the committee. Um, I think we get their voice. We can have two documents for elementary and secondary that are robust and developmentally appropriate and supportive. Um, and we are going to start helping schools develop their restorative practices programs this year. So we can ultimately embed that into the code next year and the skill set will be there. That's the hope. Is the vision of eventually to, I don't mean not have a, a school specific school handbook, but because the code, the, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because the, the code of student conduct often refers to a school's student handbook. Then you'll go to the student handbook and there's they're, inconsistencies. Well, yes. they're all different. <laughs> yes. And and uh, you and you sometimes yeah. can't even find the answer. It's not like you can exactly you know sure. correlate this to this. And right. so it, it it is difficult. Yeah. But that's <clears> illustration. <throat> not everything is outlined right. per se. And, so when you have that little gray area of the person, child that did something, it's like, yeah. So the, you know, schools want to have their individual handbooks because there's certain um, interactions they want with kids and hallways with teachers and those type of things, but it does have to be consistent with the code of student conduct. So um, uh, I'll push uh, uh, Dr. Stallman and Mr. Potter to make certain that we're, we're reviewing embedding so there's not inconsistencies. And when they, if there's inconsistencies, it puts them in a bad situation. So, and you got to say, hey, well, this one trumps this one, and well, this one board approved, and that one's not board approved. So, I mean, it, it becomes messy in the process. All right, we want to propose staff allocations. I'll say this up front. I tried a different document because I didn't, and if you don't like it, I can go back to the other document if you want to see it. I just broke it down by certain categories so you were able to see because it, sometimes it doesn't tell a whole story. Um, so I did general funding, safe schools, reading categorical workforce, funding, anyone that was impacted, I put it on your feet. So, um, I, I, I'm sorry, I was, the, doc, the document just ran and no one could tell. And, um, it, 
if you if you interact with this document the next couple of days and want to see something different, let me know. I'm trying to make this document as clean as it can be. So because I have to, I, I want to know what zero and zero means. You know? So but I'll go over all these so that we can, I can answer your questions today or, or start you to think about what questions you may have this week. Um, ultimately, you'll see that the first um, couple are just washing out um, APs and vice principals because we're moving to the uh, the title of assistant principal. Um, when a vice principal steps out of that role, or any vice principal that currently remains in the school district, they will remain and keep their title. But when someone is either promoted or retires or resigns, um, we're just going to make an assistant principal. State statute says assistant principals can be promoted to principals, and I, I believe that I'm level on their well, This is part of my level on as well. Um, I know it's like three or four thousand dollars, but it's, it's a level process as well because. I believe that all system principles are equal. They just have different skill sets. So can I challenge you on one thing there? Sure. So you told us earlier you're leveling in CTE, so you're taking money away. Why are you not doing that with these? Well, these you said You said they will remain a vice principal. We don't have consistency. And I, it's not about people to me. Right. I think you need to treat sure. people well. Don't get me right. wrong. And I don't think taking money away from anybody is treating them well, no, it's not. but um, but we have one specific job that now you've done that with sure. in this document, and we're not. And you just said I'm not doing that with vice principals, but to be consistent, we should. Right. So the, at the end of the day, there's just there's there's too many vice principals to do. So we're going to let that phase a uh, phase out. Uh, how phase out how is that? Is that even legal? I mean, you can't say I have too many, so yeah. I'm not going to give them a pay cut, but I have one of this, so I'm going to give it a pay cut. Right. I, I think it was kind of, in that case, I think there was three schools that had an administrative change, so the person in that job never really assumed the role yes. of vice president. Well, that's why those three schools That's were, not what I'm talking about. We specifically just had the conversation that I'm leveling, right. I'm leveling job titles, so therefore, this job is no longer worth this amount of money, so it's going down. But we're just saying that the vice principal is the same as an assistant principal, but there's too many of them, so we're not going to give them a pay cut. Why are we doing that of anyone else? And it's about consistency. It's about doing the right thing because ultimately the board's responsibility is to keep us out of legal trouble and to do the right thing by our employees. And I don't think that what, we have to do one or the other. I don't think we can do both and, and come out clean. Right. Uh, and I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting that any one of our current employees would sue us. Uh, but I could definitely yeah. see where one could say, wait a minute, you're saying this job is not changing. We're not changing the vice principal's jobs, but we're saying that they are now an assistant principal but we're not changing their title, so we're not demoting them. Actually, I don't see an issue with it, to be honest with you. And but the board is who they sue, not you. Yeah, I mean, I'm just telling you, I would, and I would put the board in that situation. So it, it, a lot of jobs need to be leveled in, in this organization. And the, in these positions here are just vice principal positions that are vacant. There's being a flip to assistant principals. Mr. Davis, on the that's for two. That's for two people. Yes, ma'am. That is to protect. We have one that has one month that is it going to extend. Uh, she has one month before she retires, and so we want to make sure we we compensate her and, and take care of her. And we have another individual for one month that needs to have uh, continued service just to just to protect her. And, she, and I know it says that Job completely changed. Sure. So, 
and, and the other side I don't get off of, I mean, every director that we have, maybe we have between eight and ten, they, they oversee, you know, 12 to 200 people in the organization, not three. So, I mean, just, just put that in perspective. All right, so we go back to um, look at it. Um, uh, we we're moving a, a licensed nurse from, well, Clay High School is getting a licensed nurse for student needs. So that end of the day, they'll have to pick up one. Um, Ridgeview High School will have a student that is aging out of, the, of, of our education center. So that we are removing that licensed nurse. Um, we've, all, we've, we've removed the mechanic, the maintenance mechanic, and also the technical coordinator one, uh, uh, mechanic and operations. And then we've also removed the technical coordinator service one and IS. Okay. Yes, which one to show it and then the, the all the informational services positions are the ones we talked about these are the ones that we look at the org chart and we'll be at uh, we'll, we'll save twelve thousand dollars by December um, and everything else is, is pretty much at home here. So everything else is Title I. We've got some restructuring here. Yes, ma'am. I'll, 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 I'll come to Title I. I also want to say the last one on the general revenue is W. Cherry. We had two positions because they have around 47 to 50 kids that they were, will be intaken based on the total of enrollment. So we want to make sure that we go ahead and get the positions now. If they don't, if the students don't show up, uh, which we forecast they will. Then we'll move those allocations to a school and be based on the class size. Just curious, are any of those kids in the sequence? I am not sure. Let me ask you this. Are they in the public at Cherry, for instance? Are these kids coming from private school, home school, other counties? Or is there a. It's, it's all over. Some are from, from, coming from Duval, some are coming from uh, charter schools, some are coming from home schools. So it's just a big issue. Yes, ma'am. Just for me, for you, we have an opportunity. Yeah, no, that's cool. I think that would be nice to track over time mm -hmm. of when we do our lotteries, where we get our applicants from, and then and then well, where those kids come from. If we have you, you have provided it. some of that. I can send it back to you. I know, I knew you said that. No, I'm saying over time, yeah. like it's, where we are coming from, yeah. over, you know, over. So we look at state schools, uh, Mr. McCauley, and, and the kind of culture vision is just um, uh, redistributing how funding for the position is funded. And so we're going to change one to 0.6 to safe schools. And that other 0.4 will be under federal funding as well, but that position currently uh, exists. Uh, reading categorical position, we're going to leave in a, one of the uh, special positions, as I told you, curriculum specialists that we talked about uh, for the other for the position coordinator. And we look at the workforce, that's just part of the, the restructuring of the director, CTE, and supervisor, too. And then back to what, um, to what you asked in reference, Ms. Dutter, to the federal dollar for Title, Title I funding. As you know, uh, with a new house bill being assigned, schools get to determine how they want to spend some of the Title I funding. And this is just an example. They, want, they, they wanted to add Title I assistance to provide the assistance in the classroom for intervention. And then they want to have uh, some schools want to offer a computer lab assistance so they can cycle kids through there to have more resources available. And, um, and then uh, adding, uh, looking at adding for students to specialists as well to better serve. So no longer can the district kind of tell schools how to use that funding. They have the availability. We, we'd like to coach, but they have the availability to use funding as they see needed within their organization. The schools are. And then the, the last piece is just federal funding about the set net position. We went from a specialist to a supervisor. It's already embedded in the grant. It's a wash there for that relationship with funding. Just be able to take on more responsibilities. C18s is our, <coughs> our monthly annuals and uh, warrants and vouchers. C19 is just amendment, uh, budget amendments for the month. 
twenty is the um, is our financial report for the month. C21 is our property inventory of our fixture and furniture. C22 is our AV equipment and materials. C23 is software. C24 is just our report of, of vehicle reports. C25 is deletion of any items that we have. The organization is really we are properly not identified for audits. C26 is bid renewals, so we put out a number of renewals for bids um, to uh, for for trash pickup, for electrical, and also um, AC services, and also our supports for our phones. We have uh, awarded a bid, and um, in this it acknowledges which companies have been uh, recognized as, as the individuals that will lead the work um, for the uh, trash pickup disposal. This is a three-year uh, renewal, which will be uh, driven by, I think, advanced disposal. We also have a, an annual uh, renewal for our engineer electrical services, which will be TLC engineering. Then we have a uh, AC uh, annual renewal, which will be <coughs> Brain and WWK. And then we have a renewal for tele uh, infrastructure for telephones, and um, which will be to um, convert phones and uh, I think uh, help us with. Sorry, okay, past six walls. C27, this is where we uh, awarded bids for uh, repairing floors, and this is for proxy floor services. This is what I continue to help us assist us with the floors that we may have for two years. I think it's going to be a problem. C28 is our uh, casualty safety, sanitation, uh, fire safety inspection report. This is an annual report that comes before the board. This tells us what issues we have with fire exits and lights. And this gives us a, uh, a clear indication of what schools we need to um, update to make sure that we are in code and we have a proper identification in our schools as it relates to um, the inspection process for, for fire related to fire and uh, lights and exit systems. I mean, normal things, uh, exit lights may be out, uh, making sure that we have an updated fire extinguisher and it's been serviced properly on an annual basis, just little things such as that. Cool. I think it's pretty solid. I mean, we could always do better. Well, for as many buildings as we have, oh, I know. Okay. every single solitary portable. I know. But we got good staff and they continue to work on it. Uh, C29 is just pre-qualifications for contractors. We have two. C30 is our project priority list for um, identifying eligibility for project and organization. We'll, one thing we want to do in our project priority list is to ask school why. And this allows us to use um, uh, LCIF funds to help with uh, the, the processes and infrastructure of the school. Anything you got, Kim? C31. This is our guaranteed maximum price package for school Y. Um, this is a place we're right now to be open and honest with everyone. This information will open on June 27th. Right. And uh, I believe that uh, we will work hard to get a price prior to the board meeting so you'll be able to see and inter interact with if we have any questions. And we put a place order for that, uh, for that number, which we should receive June 27th. Right. So this was originally going to come in July board meeting, but July board meeting was moved up. Thankfully, the bid opens on the 27th, and we can provide the GMP2 to you and uh, get it done on the 29th. It's exciting. We're working hard. We're pushing three shifts. Right. Up there? This week, they're going to push trees, and we're going to temporary power today. Um, with that, we'll get internet and we'll be set up with the camera up there, so we can have a site that we can be able to check and watch. Awesome. And then the ground breaking is on the 29th. Awesome. 29th. Thank you. Can we call? No, no, you can't drive one time. No, I didn't go to the touch a truck this year. So. I've already asked. I've already asked. Aaron, please. Thank you for that picture. That's your welcome. Sure. No problem. Just about the bumper. The barrier. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
phase plans for uh, school wise on there, just final changes. We we learned a lot about Copper Gate and what we like to do, what we, we what, you know, what uh, successes we have and what we duplicate for the building, what some uh, alterations and adjustments we want to have. So these specs will identify any alterations that we put in for, for this building so for use of the Copper Gate plan. And um, uh, I think it's a plus for us to, to really make the adjustment to have some final specs for, for everyone to interact with. Change order number one, this is for Wilkin, uh, Wilkinson Junior High School HVAC uh, <coughs> replacement building. We are uh, just, this is just on here for the reduction of taxes and making sure that we get $5,200 back um, uh, for, for our tax savings. We're going to use all hard hats, right? Um, D1 for discussion. This is the contract with Southern Strategies Group uh, at a request of the school housing. So this is on here um, for board discussion. D2, appointment of a board member and one citizen to the value adjusted board. Uh, this is put on here by Ms. Caracas. <coughs> Special action. D5, I'm oh, sorry, it is D5, right? D5 is, um, this is just our, our, we advised last month to change it to our school board policy 202. This is where individuals who were satisfactory or not reappointed, they have the option of going back in the pool, they don't have to sit out for a year, they can be reemployed. I've said it over and again, there may be interact, uh, interactions that were not favorable between an employee and a leader, it just wasn't a good fit. They may be not reappointed or placed, you know, or, or concluded, and uh, they may be a fit somewhere else and could do great work. So we, we want to make sure that we give employees that opportunity to, um, to, to continue to be connected to our school district. Um, B6 is the public hearing for approval of textbooks for environmental science. This is where we, uh, we know that we brought this into our progression. This will only strengthen our work um, for national schedule guidelines to put kids into another science class for offerings. This will help kids strengthen their knowledge about bio. This is a lead to bio. We see that some of our, our bio scores are areas of opportunities for us. So um, this will help strengthen their, their core knowledge as it relates to, um, to biology, pre work of biology. I love the I don't like the other word. I have the other word, but I don't like the other word. I, mean, I was just thinking, the man has the most importance. I want to be positive. Yeah, I want to be positive. Um, B7 is a hearing for approval for uh, advertised K-5 social studies adoption. This is where teachers have worked through November to June to identify social studies curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to work hard to uh, we're going to add classroom libraries to K-5. And it's going to be a lot of it's going to be um, anchored on social studies literacy, and they will involve and, and, and expose students to. Also, with uh, looking at primary resource kits for um, for guided reading sets for K3, particularly for social studies, and then also um, uh, DBQs projects and all for every teacher in four or five uh, in social studies. And I think they love it. They're excited about it. <laughs> That's, that is so very this exciting. is this is a, a great initiative that uh, this district that I inherited. Um, uh, and I think it's a, a great strategy that, that teachers love. Mm -hmm. So I wish I could afford it for everyone. I cannot. But these will be used with uh, textbook adoption funding. And so this is basically teacher group. Absolutely. That's, the, that's Absolutely. one of the keys here. Yeah. This is a teacher group. Yeah. Their selection, uh, mm -hmm. their vetting process. And I think they did a solid job here. I mean, because we needed to, 
when, when I walk classrooms, we need to have a better opportunity for classroom libraries, and this is only going to reinforce that for teachers. We'll help them with leveling, so their students will know if I'm reading on a uh, end level, I know to select a book within that range, or if I have a certain lifestyle score, I know what book to select versus going and I want to read X, Y, and Z, and it may not be on the grade level, it may not be challenging, and we can help with that process. <laughs> I go past right there, quick. You need to be picking it towards your legs somehow. So it's on the great level. Good question. I have no issue with that, but um, last week at the um, Florida School Board Association, Ms. Stutter, Ms. Bella, and I sat in a breakout session together on the new instructional materials law that was passed, okay. which is separate than 7069, sure. yes. Yes. so isn't likely to be challenged in court or anything. And um, Ms. Bola and I, while we're sitting there listening to the guy, are trying to look up on our website our instruction materials. It's very difficult to find. So we have got to, as you're doing this website, whatever, um, it is not clear how to get that. And in addition, they were telling us that it's not only instructional materials used in the classroom, right. but if a teacher brings in something from outside, yeah. and, um, and then it's also uh, libraries. Yeah, yeah. Great book. So, um, anyway, we, yeah. we any of the media, media books yeah. would be online. I mean, yes. that's their list of them. But, but even, even going to, like, I went to the parent portal and elementary education, and it keeps going back to, oh, this is who is responsible for this, right. and this is who is responsible for that. And I'm like, no, I want to know what are, as a parent, I see parents, I'm like, what on that? I want to know what books my children are going to be reading. Not individual books, but what textbook are they using? Yes. 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 Well, we should have that now. I mean, that was, you know, yes. what are the standards? Yes. Right. It's there. <laughs> it's we very difficult to find. Yeah. And then I know it's there on an individual school website. I know it's there. Yeah. Because we would refer our parents to it, go to the AES website, and look for this. And you can see it. But it's not on all of them. Correct. I'm assuming this needs to be a little more. So what frightens me is the fact that in the gauge now, any material will have. And, and there are, and they talked about that. Someone raised, someone raised the question about newspaper articles. So, you know, back in the days when the teacher would bring in a current event, current event. and well, you had to read it and then write a right. response. Well, now, yeah. uh, technically, uh, a member, and it's not just a parent. It's any member. Of, it, it says resident of the county, and then they later define resident of the county to be basically if you live in the state of Florida. Right. Mm -hmm. So anybody can yes. challenge, and, um, and the hearing officer has to be someone not paid by the district, unbiased, but then, <laughs> then we're supposed to have them come back and give a recommendation. Now they did say the board has the final say. Right. That it's the same as in other judicial matters that we act. What was it that the twist we call it that they couldn't be an employee of a district, but they had to be someone employed by the school? You not that they recommended but that we're going to hire them right. because we have to pay them, them so they're not virtual they they not an employee. It was very confusing. Yes. So we asked the question and they couldn't really answer you because they said, well, you know, it's, it's, the, it's new. It's that was yes. And given that we all got emails from citizens when this bill was first introduced, I believe that our district will face this yeah. oh, very soon. Sorry. And so we will have yes. to have some process in place. Sure. <laughs> Probably Mr. McCauley should not have one more thing added to his plate. No, uh, <laughs> it's all. 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 None of the attorneys could answer the question either. <laughs> 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 it's going to be a team. <laughs> 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 They should be able to. Yeah, teachers can go in, so and focus. That way? Just have the focus. Yeah, you could. Uh, but the problem is, is that I, I can. Think that's a lot. <laughs> listen, I, yeah. no, I listen. I got you. I'm with you. Like but the element, right? well, yeah. well, the issue is, I think it's a good strategy. The issue is, I can't mandate that a teacher uploads or creates or keeps relevant their. You know, 
I think I have to bargain that. Because I could drive. We've had, well, we've I'm had, had I'm, I'm I'm had, I'm 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 serious. I'm serious. I will tell you, they something that has been an issue in the past <laughs> is that is having teachers timely um, input grades in the focus, and you can't even yes. mandate that. You can't even say, so you can have it, and we'll, and we'll get parent complaints. I'll get them where they'll say, it's, it's been, we're about, we're at progress report time, and there's no grades in there, and all of a sudden my child's failing. Yeah. So, so can, we, can we look at, I, I think we can't make that requirement. Because I, so I want to say this, AI is really Lisa, you can't. Was that recent? Or was that a while? But, yeah. but yeah. what yeah. I'd like to do there was something that is A, if we can look at, uh, can we, is there a time frame we can get to update their website so they stay relevant and the constituents can see? At the same time, I cannot disagree more than the fact that, I, I just look at this with my 16 year old daughter in algebra two. And I say this because no grades were put in until the minute grades were done. So, I, well, my frustration as a dad, I'm going to let my daughter handle a 16 year old. But, you know, superintendent, I was frustrated. I would never professionally address that individual, but that can't happen. So, we got to figure out there's certain measures along the way to update. Because I can tell you at my house, and I'm just speaking for example, my kid comes in and wants to do something on Friday night. Well, Give me your phone or do a computer, I want to see focus and I want to see grades yes. mm -hmm. there. You earn something, congratulations, versus, you know, I can't make that judgment if mm -hmm. you don't have grades. Right. Focus is critical. Personal teacher websites. Yes, ma'am. Isn't in focus is already a website embedded under here? There is, teacher. but not all of them use it and they no. don't have to use it. We don't it. use it because there are free websites out there that are very simple to just here, I'm going to put in my name, my grade level, and whatever, and here's my initial thing, and now I officially have a website. So boom, I've met the requirement of having a website, and I don't look at it for this here because I may use my cell phone because on a day-to-day, minute-to-minute basis, I can text, text that everyone. parent and say, or on class dojo, and say, your child just did an amazing job. Or your child just got an A on their test. Or they're you know, the mobile. Yeah, I mean it's there are so many, so many different ways that teachers communicate. Sure, I, I was that saying. website is almost like I mean we you can go on focus and set up your email account. You can go up on your phone or everything. Set up your email account to sure. those parents and say you know I sent out an email. I I'll be honest. I sent out an email saying. We took three tests today, it's Friday, those grades aren't going to be in until possibly Thursday next week. You know, or, or the Tuesday folder is going to be on Wednesday. Because there's a lot that happens. I mean, and it's not, we don't use Scantron in elementary school. So you can't just scan and say, boom, oh, there it is online. Or if you're doing a writing. If you're grading something that's writing, it takes time. And that's kind of but that's, but I, I don't but think that's, this particular statute requires us to post all of that kind of stuff that you would put on a class website. You don't have to put all that. No, I'm it's saying that a citizen can come back and challenge. challenge. And so then the oh, for the for the this. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was talking about the focus oh, yeah. site. Yeah, I think most of them do a syllabus and put their entire like supplies, focus, field trips, syllabus, all of that. They only just have the right to challenge. That's all yeah, they, they get yeah, them. But the, they do the, well. but, yeah. but no, the specifically, a syllabus will not meet the requirement of the statute in that all of our text, instructional materials, textbooks, and supplements have to be on your district website. On the school, yes, on the district website. But if the syllabus is still alive, mm -hmm. if they all had that information and you had a link, Google Docs. Website. That's yeah. why we have Google. Google yeah. Docs. Well, this for Ms. Johnson's class in mm -hmm. third grade in Charleston. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the, and the thing about Google Docs is um, Mr. Broski and I had this conversation on um, a, a job description, but it applies in the same way. So I was trying to click on the link on our website to pull up a job description, and I said it, it, it wasn't working on my home computer. So I called Mr. Broski, and he said, I don't understand that. See, it's 
coming up when I click it. Well, his, he, his computer is automatically logged into Google Docs. So he went straight there. At home, I wasn't logged into Google Docs, and I don't know that parents would log into Google Docs, so we have to be careful about that. Right, I'm just right. saying. Right, you can attach it. The other side of that is that not every teacher does a syllabus. I mean, a kindergarten teacher doesn't always do a syllabus. Third grade, you know what I mean? No, I do. In know. fifth grade, we tend to do <coughs> more of that. Or sixth grade because we're preparing them then for junior high. Mm -hmm. But but that's their but that the, a the curricula or the books that we use like is embedded on. Um, I would check. I would be interested in checking each of the schools to see. Let's go to a grade level. Mm -hmm. They go to fifth grade and yeah. but, but with our, our is that is up is for young for uh -huh. syllabuses that we can create similar to template this is but couldn't our curriculum maps and guides kind of act as that because it mm -hmm. not only talks about a year at a glance it tells us where we're going every every module every unit and what we're covering but also talks about it identifies the text that's embedded that's just it i mean you use go math for k through whatever well, and I'm stepping, I'm stepping way outside of my expertise though, but I do remember, as Mr. I think it was you, painfully probably remembers, when the Oak Leaf High School website, individual high school website got hacked. That's right, I think it was China that year. Yeah. <laughs> I was a banner you that year. Thank you. Was it Bristol? We had several events that year, it was a good time. So my point is, at the, I thought at that time the directive from IT, and now I'm looking at Jeremy behind you, I thought the directive from IT was we're going to move away from school individual websites that we can't control the security over, and that would apply for these teachers, because I'm now thinking about what Ms. Bola just said about if a teacher goes to this website, she can have a free website, she logs in her stuff, that we're responsible for the content of that. If it gets hacked and it says all kinds of nasty things, that's a problem. I don't know. Do you, do you want to reply to that? I, mean, I can reply to that for you. So one of the things, like you're talking about the individual school websites, uh, that is definitely, so that kind of came down before I was here. As a matter of fact, they did that about eight months before I got here. Mm -hmm. It was the right move, by the way. Um, it was definitely right move. Um, but what we've done since then, as Ms. Bola said, there's it's called WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. That's called the website design. Okay. That's literally what people use. Um, so what we've started to do is because filtering is a big part of our E-rate, which is a big part of our cash flow. Basically, we're funded through E-rate on the IT side. Um, we do have to monitor all those sites through our website filtering through CIVA. Um, so when you do all of that together, what we've been doing is driving people away from websites and into Google Classroom, which has the website banner. It has the parent communication tool. So we've been pushing people that way. And what we've seen is actually that external website has started to die off. Um, and as far as the external links on Google, the security wasn't set right because it just has to be said that anyone with a link can click it. You don't have to be logged into Google to get to the Google Doc okay. at all. Okay. So we just got to set the permission correctly. Okay. Um, that's all that was in that case. But as far as the websites go, we just need to keep driving people to the singular platform. That way we have grades and parents can go in and see the kids work. Even if you're not doing Google Classroom with assignments, you can still build your website there and we can upload the parent emails from Focus. That way we've had parent verification of the email, not just some random person comes in and go, this is my email and this is my kid. Because you know the process we have to go through with Focus to make sure that that is aligned. So as we keep driving them into that singular point and opening, in, opening up connectivity, it, it's funny, we're, we're shrinking the platform down to a single platform, but we're opening up the connectivity because now we only have to have one approval point, and now we can hit it and get close. So that is a way to help solve some of the problems we're talking about. Is actually Google Classroom adoption has been pretty good over the last 16 months, and it's increasing, and it actually solves some of the problems we're talking about. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. I think back what I said about the books we have online. There was a new one school's website. I can't get to anything. <laughs> so I took that back. Not my school, but another school. I went to a different school, and I thought, you're right. It's not all available. And I'm clicking on the sub 
the little sub boxes and it's saying, not found, not and available, not this. But I'm like, no, we're what? moving to the new platform. Remember, we're, we, we're moving from the Weebly platform to the Blackboard platform. So um, Ms. Snyder's in charge of that conversion and we're working with her. So I would say, as we're doing this platform rollout, this needs to be integrated into the rollout. Mm -hmm. And what we can do is set it up at a, as you said, Mr. Connor and Ms. Stallman, set it up at a district level. Yeah. And then for individual sites, we just add links to the schools there. So it's in a uniform, singular place. And when someone challenges us, we can point to one URL and say everything is right here. Did we use to do Blackboard? Uh, to, and that was a, a bit of concern. Blackboard, the um, content management system, like uh, the teaching system that they yes. use, that's all been replaced by Google. But the Blackboard website, yeah. we're just using them as a web provider. Okay. Yeah, no, my email. No, no Blackboard. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that was the day I got here, was the day Blackboard ended. Yeah. 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 It's intended for secondary. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's over. I think it's over. I know. Uh, but, but I, I want to. Sure. 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 Well, I want to go to the okay. yeah. <laughs> update on partnership with the American Heart Association is going to be in your comments. And I just want to throw out, I know the American Heart Association from Poco Heart is very good. I've done it, been there, done that. Um, there are other programs, however, that schools would like. I mean, we, we were in a situation where we had three children with cancer at our school. Um, one, unfortunately, did not survive. Two did survive. And we wanted to do a Relay for Life. We did one one year, and the third grader was able to join us. Um, we did. We were going to do a Relay for Life the following year for the two that had survived sure. as a celebration and make money for the American Cancer Society and had donations and stuff. And we were told by um, I think the farmer superintendent that we were going to participate in John Pope And it was one of those, well, okay. Um, each school, I talked about each school being unique, and each school has their their programs. Sure. So I don't know, I mean, yeah, going so in with this doesn't bother me, but just keeping an open mind that some schools would like to try something else or to support another cause that would still prevent, sure. still bring plenty yeah, of so exercise and, the, you know, positive. The only reason Mark Owens is coming, not because uh, I'm not a super fan of his, that's mm -hmm. what they do, American Heart Association. He's just coming to give just a little bit more about the CPR. And he's, he's going to get out. Yeah. That's it. Cool um, schools, uh, it's on them whether or not they elect to engage in the American Heart Association, jump rope and shoot for hoops, whatever it is. That's on them. Mm -hmm. and, I, will not, I am a fan of the health community, mm -hmm. so, but they will drive what they select. We just did a relay for life at Orange Park High School, I think, mm -hmm. about a month ago. So yep. um, we're open to anything we can do to help the processes and that uh, we support community initiatives. And the other thing that came up at last month's workshop, um, Ms. Karakas was very concerned about the amount of money that we were going to be spending on the five cents per gallon tax, um, the user tax, gas tax. And I spoke with Ms. Kapalousas, who's our county manager. And we found out it's not applicable to diesel. It's not applicable to diesel. So our buses are not taxed. Our cars are. By the way, not only are our cars taxed, any cars for the school board, police cars, anybody, it's a user fee. So all cars that buy gas, gasoline, only diesel doesn't count. So our buses are just just our. So that, so that that pocket of money that you saw the influx in on that line item was basically because we hadn't funded it properly. Correct. Mm -hmm. I want to say that, and that I'm making them put a real hard number for everything so I can know what how we're spending every cent, every dollar. So you're exposed to it. So there's like three. So they may be budgeted for five hundred thousand dollars, but let's be honest, they're using eight hundred thousand dollars. So I made them put eight hundred thousand dollars. On the line item, which is a true replication of what they're actually spending. So, I, I, yeah, I don't want to hide. Listen, listen we, we, the more we try to put money in certain pockets, and, and, which we don't have to do, it looks messy on the transfers. So, let's just go ahead and put it up front and be honest so that everyone on this team 
can problem solve and say that R no, this yes, this yes, makes sense, it's going to work. And hence the reason I have to do something with this document. Yes. I don't even like bringing that document. I don't have one for you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the next uh, questions from the audience. Anybody in the audience have a question? Okay. Superintendent Powell. Yes, I just want to make a couple things. Um, I want to make sure that I have the right follow-ups. First one is uh, Director of Information Services to remove private culture and just put the city superintendent. Is that correct? On that job description. They don't line up. So at the top it says it will report to an assistant oh. superintendent as decided by the okay. superintendent. Gotcha. But then embedded in the document it says shall work to improve the relations and the time and culture department. Okay, so I'll make sure it lines, so strike that. Um, coordinator of school choice and charter will add or uh, Special phone will give an explanation of why the deletion and, and the continued work of the progression plan. We will look at the student progression plan and then define or identify the 100, additional 120 minutes for a recess. Recess. Yes, it's recess. Okay. We'll also look at the individuals who do not take physical fitness class with CPR, who uh, will be exempt. And then uh, what potential they have to go online if they need to do their online module. We'll look at um, <coughs> adding videos, video um, for the code student content as it relates to technology, provide examples. It's a good idea. Um, actually, we got a little software to do that. <coughs> and then we'll get some clarification on processes for the new laws as it relates to materials and the processes. And I'll, I'll work for bargaining uh, with Mr. Boston. And then um, I think that's it. The other thing I will say is that I respect each of you um, and your decisions. Um, what you decide in reference to the allocation presented, I support you way. I'm just going to go to work. I want you to know that. So I appreciate, I understand historically where you're coming from. I appreciate your holding me accountable. And your decision, uh, my job is to, to think differently sometimes, and I would like to love a lot in the school district. You decide when the timing will be. I will continue to work hard and, and support the individuals here. Whatever you decide, we'll come to work. Any other comments from the school board? Okay. If you have any questions, call me this week. Mr. Uh, Decker, Madam Chair. Would you like to comment, Mr. Decker? Well, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> and, and you know, I'm, I'm going to respectfully request that you can uh, work that into our agendas and workshops and board meetings. I don't like to interject or uh, talk on top of people. I do have to go through a little bit of a script here by statute because I'm going to uh, be requesting and I've spoken individually uh, to each of you on the shape meeting, uh, which is also involved in trying to find privately uh, with our litigation in Trees Homes versus the school board and the designation of future school sites. I'm making a request uh, under 286-411-8 sub 8 uh, for a shade meeting to take place at the end, uh, but before adjournment of the June 29th meeting. The subject matter is going to be confined to settlement negotiation and strategy sessions related to litigation expenditures in the lawsuit. It's going to be reported by a court reporter. Uh, I'm expecting that the length will be somewhere around 30 minutes, but I'd like to keep it shorter. Uh, especially because it's coming at the end of a, of a school board meeting. Uh, the anticipated attendees will be board members uh, Mary Bola, Betsy Condon, Ashley Gilhausen, Janice Karakas, Carol Stutter, and the superintendent Madison Davis, along with me, the school board attorney David Dagna, and outside counsel Sam Garrison. Uh, I'm going to ask to add that to the agenda today, uh, just so it's part of our written agenda. And while I have the floor, uh, I wanted to give kudos, um, first of all, thanks uh, to everyone, uh, from the superintendent to Mr. McCauley for giving up office space, and Mr. Kemp for uh, coordinating it, uh, my, my uh, a departure from what I call the meat walker across from <laughs> Dave Brosky, uh, where I can see my breath every morning. Uh, I'm now in uh, the portable, which I'm now calling uh, Polar Express. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it works terrifically well. Uh, I actually now have space for, for an assistant. We're getting that ball rolling as well. And uh, in the meantime, Karen Bush has been phenomenal, uh, helping me out with all the stuff that she has had to do. Uh, and I also want to give kudos to, to this whole administration with respect to changes that really are low-hanging fruit uh, and improving our processes and procedures uh, insofar as contract review, uh, negotiate, from negotiation all the way through execution. And I'll be presenting to the board for its consideration uh, various alternatives to articulate and let everyone know where their silos are as far as authorization. I think that it makes an awful lot of sense to revisit that as, as a school board uh, and establish um, levels of authority for the superintendent and his designees as to contracts, MOUs, even interlocal uh, uh, agreements that really need not, in my uh, humble opinion, uh, take up much of your time. And I think it would expedite things insofar as good, sound business practices uh, to, to provide to the superintendent uh, and his designees certain levels of authority. And then there are uh, matters that just have to go to the board, and I know what those are. Uh, but I will need to figure out with the board where it wants to go with respect to various thresholds, uh, you know, $50,000 or more type thing, uh, on all commercial contracts under the board. ESE uh, uh, contracts, when we're dealing with students, uh, let's put a threshold on that or not. We want to see every one of them. I need to have that conversation with the board, and I expect to do so. But at the operational stage, really, this whole team is, is very, very good. And I'm telling you, after uh, attending the Florida School Board Attorneys Association meeting, I have so much, and we have so much, to be thankful for. Uh, a lot of very good things are going on here. It's got a very good energy as well. So I, I, I'm very happy to be part of that. Um, another thing that I'll, I'll present to the board, you know, I'm being ambitious, I want to uh, present it to the board sooner rather than later, uh, is facilitating uh, negotiation and resolution of matters that go uh, through risk management before they become litigation, what is it that, that the board is expecting uh, of uh, the operations uh, in dealing with you know, threatened lawsuits? What authority does the school board attorney have in resolving them? Right now is I'm playing things by ear and I'm bringing everything to the board uh, because there is not, um, in my view, uh, an articulated policy that should give everyone comfort at the operational level as to really what the board needs to be informed of or not. And once we you know, set out the, the, that guidance and those uh, policies and guidelines, uh, I think that it's really going to make for uh, a more streamlined and sensible approach to even uh, risk matters as well. So one is dealing with contracts. That's kind of a Herculean effort by everyone and the other is dealing with uh, risk management issues. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments before we